Number 10 is Octopath Traveler for the Nintendo Switch. Yes, this is the biggest RPG game of the year. One of, because I had to put something else up on the list, which it kind of is an RPG, but then it kind of isn't on the way too, but you know what I mean when I, when I get to it. So, brand new RPG, which is not a remastering or anything else overall anything whatsoever this is the main rpg of the year this is like the main one this is the game of the year for me rpg of the year octopus traveler i'm not gonna lie i only played two storylines i i don't remember the one guy's name i'm just like the main swordsman of the, of the game and then there's prin prin rose i have to love her story the most um it's pretty dark it's like my parents or was like killed and now i have to serve as like a prostitute in a way just to give revenge on my parents and know what's going on I'm like I'm not even joking as much as I love this game I am not joking this is a really intense RPG not like intense like like rated M for mature but really intense like it gets to you with the storyline and the music is fantastic and phenomenal and oh my god the graphics the whole 2d HD Graphics, the 2D HD, I think that's what it's called, HD 2D uh, graphics. I think I don't know what's it called exactly, but I think that's what it's called. They just annihilated it. Annihilated it? Annihilated it? No, nailed it. Sorry, annihilated it if you want to call it, but still, it was fantastic. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it was fucking amazing. It's really fucking good. Um, it game was just hours and hours and hours on end. But I really was playing it just for the storyline, mostly for Prin Rose, and I haven't finished it, but I was really enjoying it. I'll say that for sure. Go check out Octopath Traveler. And that's, that's his number 10! Number 9, Dead Cells. Yep, so Dead Cells. Oh, if you played Shovel Knight and you know how Dark Souls kind of works, this is a game that you'll be knowing. Dead Cells won my game of the year of this year. Uh, and you, yes, you notice the less is not on this list. I just, I didn't have a chance to place the less. That's the only reason why it's not on this list. It could have been on the list, but I don't know. Dead Cells, again, if you've never played Dead Cells, it's, it's just, oh my god, how do you, how do you explain it? Yeah, that's exactly what I said, but it's like, it's a 2D kind of like Prince of Persia, but you have to kind of kill everyone to get some cells, and you, that's the only way you can kind of process it, also get some new weapons and all that, and it's just think of it like Shovel Knight, but dark and greedy and just Dark Souls and I guess some Castlevania Symphony of Night, but I don't know. It, it's a lot to say, but I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I think it's Game of the Year. Um, I almost bought the Switch version, but other than I had the PS4 version, but I wanted to trade any second the Switch version, but again, I'm weird, so. <laughs> Anyways, that's just me. Let's get on to number eight. Number eight. Luigi's Mansion 3DS. I just fucking love Luigi's Mansion. It was one of my favorite GameCube games ever. Top 10, 100%. I don't know if it's my number one or not. I don't even know what my number one is. I never thought about it before, but I really like Luigi's Mansion. Um, when it came to the, the, the sequel, Dark Boon, I, I love that game too. It wasn't my favorite. I still preferred the first game. I'm happy that they released this one. Um, it still feels like Luigi's Mansion, of course, with a little bit of difference, a teeny, teeny bit of difference, as you can't really notice, but, again, I was really enjoying it. I'm not going to put it lower on the list, because it's a remake of a game that came out back in the GameCube days, or 2001 or two, whatever it is for you guys, but I enjoyed it. It was really good. It was really fun. I was actually really happy they remastered it. I was not even expecting to remaster it, but it didn't make sense because they now uh, announced Luigi's Mansion 3, <laughs> so we'll wait and see about that. Anyways... Number nine, or number nine, next entry, whatever. Now, number seven, yeah, I know it's the game of the year, but it's not the game of the year for me. God of War, other known as Dad of War, or Dad of Boy, or Dad of Boy, or no, I just said, yeah, I don't know what the hell I'm saying, but anyways, Dad of, Dad of War, Dad of Boy, Dad of Boy, <laughs> Dad of Boy, <laughs> so anyways, Dad of War, God of War, whatever, the PS4. Um, yes, I, I actually was liking it. Um, it was the first time in a long time I actually kind of wanted to invest myself into the God of War franchise. Um, I was playing it day one. I was actually playing it for like at least a week or so. I don't, I don't know exactly. I kind of stopped after the... I don't want to spoil it. Well, it's not even really spoiling. You see the serpent in the trailer. So after you see the serpent, I don't know what, where. I just remember when I finally got there and I saw the serpent. I liked it. I stopped for, again, another reason. I don't know why. 
Um, and it doesn't even matter how hard I try deep down inside. <laughs> um, regardlessly, I, I just have to say, it's not my game of the year. I 100% enjoyed it. Yes, the whole idea of changing up God of War, really, I liked it. But the whole thing, when it came out originally, God of War, it just made me think of The Last of Us. Which I liked The Last of Us a lot. God of War was always this other kind of thing. And now that God of War was like, you know, it's not a bad game. I just really don't think it's the game of the year for me. I just really think it's something else. So I'm not going to say it wasn't a bad idea to change it up with the whole God of War, uh, you know, Kratos and... Uh, I forget the damn boy's name. Um, the, the boy. Uh, so, you know, I did think it was different. I liked that. So, it was it was good. So. Number six is Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. As much as I like the Pokemon franchise, to me, it could have been like two entries higher. Maybe three. Could have been like number three or something. I don't know. But... The only problem is that it doesn't... It is Pokemon 1 generation. It's Generation 1. It's Kanto. It's, you know, red, blue, yellow, leaf, green, fire, red, whatever you want to say it is. It's a remake of that. Basically, it's yellow, but still. Um, the only thing is I kind of, like, was... You know, kind of, like, not as much interested was... It, it played like Pokemon Go, which was... It is connectable. Connectable? I don't know. It, it, it can play with Pokemon Go, but the thing is, I I wanted a Pokemon game that was, you know, on the Switch, and it, it feels like an, an actual traditional Pokemon game. An RPG element, which it is, but the whole catching of Pokemon just kind of like made me like, it's too easy. It's too easy, but I just wanted it to be like the original games just HD graphics on a home console that would have been fucking amazing which that kind of is what we got but just not as a traditional traditional original game um yeah we can still battle the Pokemon but only like with trainers we can't battle a wild Pokemon to try to capture it just have to kind of base off a Pokeball throw which is again Pokemon Go I get that but again uh, it just that was my only gripe it's it the whole catching a Pokemon and, and trying to fight Pokemon, and you know it it just it kind of threw me away. And of course, it kind of made some things easier and it made some Pokemon different like areas to be caught. Like you never caught a Bell Sprout in the first route ever. It was always like Pidgey, Rattata, and, and I think a Weedle maybe I don't know. And you'll find a Mankey like on the route left from Virilium City or Town or whatever it's called. And um, you know you're on the road to Virilium City. Uh, but the Mankey's not there anymore. Now you see it's like the same Pokemon that would be there before. But, you know, there's no Mankey. I don't know. There's some differences you can notice if you're a diehard Pokemon fan from Generation 1. But I just feel like if they had the whole... We could still battle with wild Pokemon and try to just fight for HP other than to try to catch them all the time to get HP. I think that would be... I like that better, but it's not. So, I'm just saying that. But, again, I did put it up to the top 10 list. I'm still enjoying the game 100%. I... I think I barely beat Misty, so I'm not that far in the game, but regardless, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee is number six. Alright, number five, here we go, top five, is Dragon Ball Fighters. I'm not even shitting you, if you know my whole history of Dragon Ball Fighters this year, Dragon Ball Fighters is most likely my number one online multiplayer game of the year. Why? Because I've been playing... Dragon Ball Fighters on the PS4 for two months. I switched over to the Xbox One version of Dragon Ball Fighters, and I was owning the shit out of that. And then when they finally released a patch to make all our characters pass, uh, was it? I, I forget what it was passed. Uh, God or Freezer Clan or whatever. After they passed our Super Saiyan 2, I forget what the highest rank was at the time. After you got past that rank, it's even higher than before. I was like, I'm gonna try again, but. At that point, they kept releasing DLC characters, which I got out of because the DLC characters were always broken. Bardock, Bardark, so I keep saying that weird to me. Uh, Broly, Android 17, uh, Cooler. I just, some of these characters were just getting too overpowered, even if you didn't have the DLCs or you didn't want the DLCs. But yet, the original characters were still fine, but they were weaker than the overpowered DLC characters, which everybody kind of played them more, especially with like Super Vegito. 
uh, blue, which, you know, was kind of crazy. Because, yeah, if you're, like, super talented, super fucking great, the best player in the world, yeah, you could beat all these characters. Or maybe the guy's sucky as hell. Or maybe you know what you're doing with the same characters like you've been doing it for the, all the damn time, like myself, but yet you still can't fucking win. So, I mean, I had a lot of, like, fun times, especially playing the story mode, playing online, but the thing is, it also kind of pissed me off a lot of times I was trying to just win my best characters ever, which mine were Trunks, Goku Black, and Frieza, and I knew how to do every single combo other than kind of, like, uh, the only combos I still kind of don't know how to do as well is the, uh, like, you know, um, like, charge, you kind of go up to the air, you keep, uh, you know, making go higher and higher, and then you kind of, like, like, spike them to the ground, and you kind of get down there, you kind of, like, jump in the air, and you kind of grab them, and you kind of do your little thing, and then you do it again, and then you can do another, like, uh, like, attack into it, and then also you can do your final attack, your ultimate move, whatever it's called. So, there's a bunch of combos I know how to do, but, like, that weird one, I don't know, I always kind of mess around with it, it was kind of weird for me, but still, I just, that game, I loved it, the story mode was kind of bleak, other than learning about Android 21, but the whole, like, how many times you have to fight, uh, an evil version of Go Tanks or freaking Majin Buu or whatever. It got kind of annoying, kind of old, whatever. Kid Buu, you fucking suck. But it was the same thing, kind of old, really fast. So, yeah, I really like Dragon Ball Fighters, and that was literally the number one anime fighting game, and or not fighting game of the year, but anime game of the year. All right, number four. All right, number four is <laughs> Spyro Reignited Trilogy. It is the highest trilogy on this list and I wasn't even going to put it on this list because there's a trilogy. Usually I don't do that. I usually don't. Some I do on special occasions. But like um, I did 2.8 one year because I had like uh, 0.2 fragmentary passage before I sleep on there because it was a brand new game technically. So I threw it on there. But basically Spyro Arena Trilogy has no brand new game at all. But it's remaking the first game ever which for me that was the game I grew up with Spyro the Dragon. Um, there's other people that's only played, like, random ones, like 2 and 3 and not 1, or it was 1 and 3 and not 2, or, 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 you know, 1, 2 and not 3. It was something like that. For me, it was just 1. I grew up with Crash Bandicoot, with mostly all of them, except I didn't really care about the first game. I just liked 2 and 3 the most, and I played Spiral Dragon, the first one, the most. So, I'm weird. It was kind of vice versa for me on that one. Maybe some other people differently, but who knows. Uh, for Spiral Dragon, again... I'm loving what they did with it. It's I, I don't hate it at all. It's just perfect for what it is. I am super glad with it. Uh, except for one thing, uh, Toys for Bob, Activision. Why do I have to download the patch just so I can play Year of the Dragon and uh, Riptoes Rage or whatever it is in Europe that's called as well? Why do I have to download the patch to download those games on the disc? Should it just be on the disc or just can you just not get a second disc on there? I mean, I don't get that. That's one thing we all didn't get. We, we delayed the game for two months and you couldn't do that anyways? That didn't make sense for me. Especially that Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy was all on one disc. And a cartridge for the Switch. And yet you can't do that for Spyro. What the hell, Activision? What the actual hell? That's my only gripe. I really like Spyro Reunited Trilogy, so that's why it's at number four. Because now I can actually enjoy... Ripto's Rage and Year of the Dragon for the first time ever, or I could actually go back to the PS1 games and appreciate those more, and then come back to the remakes and appreciate them even more than that. So, anyways, let's get into my top three of the year. All right, number three is Shadow of the Colossus. I am not even joking you. When I was personally shocked in my own head, I'm like, am I really putting Shadow of the Colossus this? high up because here's why I never really played Shadow of the Colossus until I played the PS3 version of the game and that was like three years ago because I wanted to do it be on a on a certain event called the Summer Backlog Challenge is when you play a certain amount of games for the whole summer to see if you could beat them or not it's just a fun little thing I do every year and uh, Shadow of the Colossus is one of those games I actually tried and I did succeed uh, thanks to my friend, uh, Mr. Magna Ragnarok, and including a little bit of Jazawa Toe, Jordan, Connor and Jordan, um, that, you know, helped with the game, and I, I 100% enjoyed it that much more, so thank you. I 
just I was surprised that Shadow of the Colossus was up this high. I mean, yeah. Just come to think of it, if you're just a guy taking down some Colossuses, Colossi, and you just want to save your girlfriend or wife or whatever, so you she can come back to life and like, you know, screw the devil or evil or whatever it is realistically. And I just it's a fun game. It's a fun game. I mean, it's just it it's that fun. I just didn't realize it was number three. I didn't realize it was number three. And I'm like, and I had to rethink my whole list. I'm like, wait, am I really putting this game again up this high in my head? I'm like, yeah, I did think it's better than God of War still, you know, remaking it. I mean, yeah, I don't usually put remakes this high up. I don't. That's why I just felt weird putting it on number three. I'm like, ah, should I put it lower because it's a remake? But I'm like, no, it's just... Remake-wise, this is the best remake of the year. Shadow of the Colossus for the PS4. I can't not tell you it's not. It's For me, it is. It's the best remake of the year. Please go check out Shadow of the Colossus on the PS4. If not, PS3 and PS2. What, however you want to play it, it's, it's fucking good. It's really good. Now, here we go for number two and one. Okay. Number two. <laughs> oh, you're gonna take this one as a weird one. Alright, number two is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I kind of thought this will be my number one. But then again, everyone knows how the Smash Brothers plays out. This one does have story mode, but it doesn't have like an intense story mode that like, oh my god, I wonder what's gonna happen. Like it kind of obvious what's gonna happen. It's not like as big as uh, Subspace Emissary. It really isn't from Brawl. But Smash Brothers Ultimate, yes, it's for me. It's the best fighting game of the year. It's the best. Not to say Nintendo, even though there's basically a lot of other Nintendo games on this year, but I mean, I did love this game a lot, if not Pokemon, I don't know. But it, for me, it's like the game of the year, but it's not. It's the only number two. It's only number two. And then when I was on my top five, when I was making this list, I was like, maybe this is number one. It's like, no, it doesn't feel like number one. It's like, maybe this is it. No, I'm like, maybe. I don't know. And then, like, I was just rethinking all five candidates, and I'm like, I know what number one is. I know what number one is. And Smash Bros. Ultimate, it's not number one. It would be really 100% a first number one, but it's not. I'm just glad it's on the top five because, again, it's fine. I have some little nitpicks that I'm like that good into Smash Bros. I'm not the best player in the world or anything like that. I'm just I'm good for what I like to play in main, like Yoshi, Sonic, Box, Falco, Zero Suit, Samus, you know, Young Link. Um, Pokemon Trainer, which used to be Charizard for me, but so, you know, a bunch of Pokemon like that, or Pokemon, a bunch of characters like that, but, um, yeah, uh, Ultimate is, well, the ultimate way to play Smash Brothers. Alright, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, from everywhere on YouTube, wherever you live, my number one is... Marvel's Spider-Man. Yep. Spider-Man. Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. <laughs> Spider-Man. For the PS4. I am so shocked in my mind. Not not saying this game sucks. I mean, it's my number one. I just didn't picture this really being my number one. I mean, my number one, I feel like was with Smash and Dragon Ball Fighters, or maybe even like, like God of War, maybe like Octopath, or something, but not Spider-Man. I don't know why, it didn't click to me. I mean, yeah, it, for me, it actually 100% makes sense, because it's my list, but it's just like, like, when, when you realize it's your number one, you were like, wow, it's number one. And for everyone who was watching this list hoping it would be Red Dead Redemption 2, I don't fucking like Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm just going to point out, I don't like Western games at all. I mean, there's some I kind of enjoy because they're Western themed, but they're kind of not Western at all. Like Wild Guns and Sunset Riders. I like those games, but they're Western, yeah, but they're not like Western Western, you know? So, Red Dead, I, I, I have to give it an honorable mention, but I'm not putting on my list. It's just not for me. Uh, Marvel Spider-Man. I mean, I love Spider-Man. It's my number one Marvel franchise of all time. Batman's my favorite DC franchise of all time. Um, I don't know everything about Spider-Man. I don't. 
same with Batman, I don't, but I just enjoyed this. I'm a big fan of Spider-Man games. I played the first game, I played the second game, I played some of the third, I played Friends of Foe, I played Web of Shadows, played Edge of Time, played so much higher dimensions, I played the Super Nintendo, uh, you know, like Maximum Carnage, Separation Anxiety on Genesis, you know, I played a lot of these Spider-Man games from, throughout the past, but I didn't play the ones on 64 in place, why I skipped that generation for some reason, but I just loved it, I just loved Spider-Man, it was really that fun for me, Marvel Spider-Man for the PS4, it was really that great, and I'm not even done with the game, I'm not! I'm not, and of course it's a DLC like like the night, the night of something. I don't know what's called, but the night whatever. And there's a Catwoman stuff. I get that. I'm just enjoying the game. I I don't even know what how the the game ends. I don't, and, and that's something I'm straight up not wanting to listen to anyone. Um, I knew how Smash was gonna end. Trust me, I knew how Smash was gonna end like a week before the game launched, but I didn't care to like not know. So I was like, I don't care. But Spider-Man, yeah, I cared like 100% the whole time. I still don't know how to end it all to this day. All I know is I've been told that they hint a sequel. That's all I know. But I didn't realize that Marvel Spider-Man was going to be my game of the year. So if you don't have a PS4, go sell your Xbox One and go get a PS4. <laughs> Did anyone see that meme back in the day? It was, it was so funny. It's like, uh, what was it? Uh, was it Nike? Like, just do it. Like, you know, like that whole, like, controversy with Nikes. Like, like, um, just do it. Even if it means, uh, getting rid of your Xbox to play Spider-Man or something like that. I don't know. I had it. It was a funny-ass fucking, um, uh, photo. I don't know. I probably still have it on my phone somewhere, but still, it, it was really good. Anyways, um, regardless, that's my game of the year. I know this list takes longer than, than usual, but I just wanted to hi highly recommend and explain every single entry as much as possible why they're in certain spots so again thank you all for watching i'll see you guys all for the next videos i make and also i'll see you guys all for next year's top 10 game of the years i've always wanted to make this top 10 just 10 but it's always hard for me and i always make up like 20 to 30 so once again i'll see you guys all for the next one right bye Chaos Control!